Hey guys, just before we get into this video, I want to give you a little heads up. I had some audio issue with the recording that I did for this unboxing. So you'll notice that there is a difference in audio where I have to basically re-record certain parts as uh, the, I mean, the video was fine, just the audio is messed up. But yeah, that's what you'll notice when you hear the difference in audio quality. Uh, anyways, uh, let's get into it. It's your boy PR back at it again with another unboxing and first impressions video. This time on a new little toy I picked up for the Pew Pews. As you can see just from the box, and I'm super stoked that this actually has a box this time, so it's an actual unboxing, then an unpackaging, which just sounds weird. Um, as you can see by the box, though, it is a KWA product. I currently own and run as a primary a KWA M. 93R Rafrica, and I have nothing but good things to say about that, other than the mag sometimes being super picky about what kind of gas that they like to have in them in order to get a, uh, to be able to empty out a full 48 rounds. Um, but other than that, I mean, it's, I use it indoor, I use that gun outdoors uh, from Siege to PRZ, PRZ, uh, up here in Canada. Uh, which are both an indoor field and an indoor CQB, and then a outdoor, essentially just a mount. But yeah, uh, not kind of rambling. Uh, let's get into it and uh, open it up and see what we got. And as you might be able to tell, as I bring it a little closer. I picked up a KWA KMP9R. I have been in love with this gun for a long, long, long time. Harkening back all the way to my Call of Duty days with Modern Warfare 3. I think it was in 2 as well. I can't remember off the top of my head, but 3 for sure. And I just, I mean, that's also why I use the Raprica. Uh, because most of my collection is guns that I used to love using in Call of Duty, as lame as that is. And luckily, though, the internet doesn't insult people based on opinions like that, so ha ha! Um, but yeah, uh, I've been wanting this gun for a while. I've done weeks and weeks of research, uh, checking out uh, various sites, uh, reviews, uh, gameplay footage, and... I finally just said, F it, let's get it. I really wanted the gun. I love the look of it. So here we are. Um, so as you can see in the box, um, get your mag, you get your gun. Uh, this tool here that it comes with is to adjust the hop up in the gun. Uh, they give you some oil. Uh, I don't know if it's silicone or what. Probably silicone. I love that we get nothing labeled. And of course, um, unlabeled, unmarked, unknown BBs. I'm assuming 0.20s. Don't know the brand. Don't really care. I'm never going to use them except for maybe in a grenade. Also included in the box is a KWA sticker and a piece of cardstock that has information to download your user manual as well as set up your warranty. The, there's also a kind of an open space in the box and it seems to be the same shape and size as the suppressor that you can get with this gun and I am not certain if I was supposed to get a silencer with this purchase or not. Um, I definitely am going to investigate that later, but it kind of seems odd that they would have a giant open space with nothing in it. Uh, that is the exact same sh shape and size as the suppressor, so maybe it's supposed to be. Uh, questions for later. As you may know, this gun comes with a 48 round all metal magazine and it is quite heavy. I also own a KWA M93R and run the extended magazines for that gun and the magazine for the KMP9R is far heavier. I'd probably put it at a quarter of a pound to a half a pound difference. In fact, I actually took time to weigh them both out and I was correct with my initial assessment. There is a quarter of a pound difference between the magazine for the KMP9R and the M93R. So that is pretty crazy in my books. So we're going to take a closer look at the weapon now, starting on the right side, which, as you can see, has a rail. There is, of course, the 
one of the buttons to help take down, uh, take apart the gun. There is the bottom rail, which is what the R stands for in the KMP9R. Uh, there is your ambidextrous fire selector, that's, as it's on both sides. This is where the folding stock rests when it's uh, folded. And then when we jump over to the left side, uh, you can see some trades, or I guess probably not see in this video, uh, but there are both a KWA trade as well as uh, one that says KMP9R. There is also the bolt catch and bolt release and magazine release. Uh, going back over to the right side, you will see a close up of on the bolt. Uh, it actually has a caliber six millimeter as well as a small personalized uh, serial number, which is nice. So now that we've taken a closer look at the weapon, I'll move on to my uh, initial impression of this gun. And I'm gonna start off by saying that I was incredibly happy and also very surprised that this did not come with an orange tip. Um, as many KWA guns do actually come with an orange tip, uh, even if it's outside of the US of A, um, my M93R has one. So when I got to the MP9, I was wholeheartedly expecting it to come with an orange tip and then I'd have to deal with that. But um, as the airsoft gods uh, apparently looked down upon me, I got one that had a black tip. So that is an incredible plus and one I was not expecting. Um, it, this may be just something with my gun, but um, I initially noticed that the button to both collapse as well as uh, unfold the folding stock was incredibly stiff, which isn't a bad thing necessarily, as having a stiff button means that it's not going to flop about on me in the middle of gameplay, but uh, I mean, initially I had to use two hands just to kind of get it open so I'm hoping that'll just work itself in uh, as I uh, use it more and more uh, I probably won't be folding the stock uh, that often as I am not a fan of that on any of my guns with folding stocks so once it's extended fully I'm pretty much gonna leave it like that so that is something to uh, note that it is quite possible that if you buy this gun that you may have a similar situation where the button is incredibly stiff but once again that could just work itself up loosen up as we continue to play it is even though this gun is made out of polymer primarily it does not feel cheap it feels solid uh, even the top rail which is also polymer kind of feels metal and at first I thought it was metal but uh, under some kind of investigating with magnets and stuff. It is actually uh, plastic or polymer, whatever they're using, but it is not cheap, uh, which is one thing I have to say I really appreciate when it comes to KWA. Uh, their externals seem to be pretty top notch, uh, even with my M93R, uh, that thing is a beast. I have put it through, uh, I put it through the, the ringer on several occasions and it is still kicking and still uh, working flawlessly. So yeah, the body, I mean, it, self feels really nice um, going back to the stock i was expecting there to be a lot of wobble in the stock but there's maybe i don't know two millimeters of wiggle room when fully extended which is uh, nothing like when shouldering it i mean there's barely any wobble at all and i was afraid that there would be uh, some major wobble to there so uh, it is nice um, the iron sights on it uh, from what i can tell i'm not I love them. I think they would work really well. Just shouldering the gun itself and then trying to get my sight on through them is next to impossible. It's just I have to have the gun really high up, um, so that kind of feels weird. While on the subject of the stock, I have to say that for uh, someone my size, uh, roughly six feet tall, um, the length is perfect for me. I, I tend to have my stocks on my M4s or pretty much all my or rifles with an adjustable stock. I tend to have them shorter than normal. So the foot-ish stock or folding stock that it comes with a gun, uh, it is legitimately the perfect length for me. I, I, I shoulder so nice, uh, other than the sights being really hard to get behind or to get uh, the see through them, the iron sights, uh, the gun itself shoulders incredibly well. So there's uh, that is a big bonus for me. Um, the only other thing that really threw me off about this gun was, and it still happens, is when I load the magazine, uh, even though I have the bolt opened and locked in place as I've 
apparently that's what you need to do with this thing to prevent it from shredding its, itself internally. Uh, I find that it catches on something in the mag well, and it really uh, throws me off. It feels like it's catching on something. I'm trying to figure out what it is. Um, now that I've kind of loaded and unloaded the magazine a couple dozen times, it is starting to become a little bit smoother. But uh, even in my video here, you can see quite clearly that uh, it initially catches on something and it causes you to kind of have to force it in, which I'm not a big fan of. I'm trying to figure out if maybe that's one of the things that leads to the inter internals of this gun uh, deteriorating or kind of shredding themselves. But I'm not quite certain, so I'm going to just keep doing some uh, checking on that. And maybe when I break down the gun and put it back together, maybe I can figure out what's going on. Uh, but yeah, that is something to be concerned about. But once again, this could just be my gun, as it is possible that it's just uh, well, not a, so much a lemon, but it could have a quirk to it. I don't know. Uh, just something to be aware of for anyone that is looking to purchase it, that that might be an issue. Um, other than that, though, uh, I have to say, uh, what I had heard about this gun when it comes to being loud, I, I was kind of let down uh, with the semi-auto. Um, I mean, it's decently loud. It's probably as loud as most of my other gas pistols, uh, but it wasn't as loud as everyone claimed it was. However, with that said, when I did throw it in full auto and let off uh, a small burst, no matter how, and with only three or four rounds, uh, it was incredibly loud, like far more loud than uh, it should be, even though like Compared to what the semi-auto is, uh, the full auto blows it out of the water. And, uh, I mean, like it, it just seems like it, it gets amplified by far more magnitudes than it should be. Uh, but it is it is really loud. Now I see what everyone was talking about when they said this gun was loud. Uh, semi-auto, not so much. I mean, it's about as uh, loud as any full metal uh, pistol that you may be shooting. But when this thing gets into full auto and just uh, hammers off a burst, it is... Yeah, you notice it. Um, it's going to be uh, interesting when I play with this in CQB. I'm definitely going to be letting everyone know where I am uh, if I go into full auto, which uh, unfortunately I won't be able to do at Siege, but at some of the local fields when they open up in the summer, uh, I'll be able to do this CQB uh, with full auto in this if we're running those games, and I can't wait. Uh, but yeah, so it is loud, but I find it's only loud in uh, full auto. Otherwise, it's kind of... Nothing really to write home about when it's uh, semi-auto. Uh, I do prefer semi-auto, and even in games where we can go full auto, I'll tend to be running semi-auto. And uh, this was something I was doing before I got into gas guns. Uh, I just uh, play a lot of mill sims and whatnot where semi-auto is pretty much all the only thing you can do, so I've just kind of adapted to that. But uh, that is all I have to say about this gun. Uh, I, of course, will be doing an actual review. This is just my initial impressions of the gun. But I will be doing a review in a couple of months once I actually take it out and field it. And I will let you know how I feel about it. Uh, until then, uh, peace.